Bladder problems are all too common in multiple sclerosis, and in this quick video, I review with you the anatomy of the bladder and the three most common bladder problems. If you'd like to learn about bladder and MS, stay tuned, because that learning starts right now. Thanks for learning about MS with me, Aaron Boster. I started this YouTube channel to help my own clinic patients learn between visits, and it's my hope that through these videos, I can help you learn too. I wanted to take a few minutes and talk about the bladder, specifically the anatomy of the bladder and how it can impact bladder function in MS. And so I'm going to draw up a cartoon bladder. Here you have two kidneys. And here's the bladder with a ureter connecting the kidney to the bladder and the kidney to the bladder. Here's the urethra. So the kidneys make urine and they fill the bladder with urine. And then you expel the urine through the urethra. In MS, we can see one of three problems. The first one we refer to as neurogenic bladder with symptoms of urgency, frequency, and having to sprint to the bathroom, sometimes having accidents. And oftentimes that's because the bladder itself is tight. It's a tight little racquetball. So in the drawing, imagine if the bladder was tight and it was only that big. You can imagine that you drink half a Coca-Cola and suddenly you have to go to the bathroom. And so there's a problem with storage capacity. It's too small. Now, there are medicines that we can take that work here to allow the bladder to reach its normal size. And these are anticholinergic drugs like Detrol, uh, Ditropan, Sanctura, etc. We take those drugs to expand the bladder so that it can be a normal size and have a normal capacity to hold a normal amount of urine. There's a second problem that we can see in MS. And these are symptoms of retention. You feel like you have to go and you push and you can't empty or you void and then you have to go right back to the bathroom. Symptoms of retention are caused not because of the carrying capacity of the bladder, but because the outflow track is tight. So I, I draw it like this, like it's a tight um, little straw that you're trying to push urine through. Now this is pharmacologically a different problem and we don't use the medicines that I just mentioned to fix it. We use a different set of medicines here. Specifically, we use off-label Flomax. Flomax was invented to shrink enlarged prostates in men, but men and women that have this problem with their urethra being too tight can benefit from Flomax. There's a third problem that we can see with MS bladder, where someone has a tight little racquetball bladder and the bladder neck is closed. They have both problems and we call that dyssynergy. And sometimes we have to use both a medicine for here and a medicine for there. Now you might ask, how do we sort out a bladder problem where the bladder is too small and can't hold a lot of urine versus a bladder problem where the bladder neck is tight and you can't get the urine out? One way is based on the clinical history, the symptoms the human being experiences. So if you have urgency and you have to go right now, or if you have frequency, getting up way too often to go, nocturia, getting up multiple times a night, these are symptoms that would suggest a tight little racquetball bladder, a problem up here. If the story is different and the person sits on the toilet and, and has to really, really concentrate to go push on their bladder, they may stand up and sit right back down and go again, or they have trouble emptying all the way. This would be more suggestive of a problem affecting the bladder neck. There's another tool that we use here at the MS Center that helps us a whole lot, and that's a bladder ultrasound. Now, this is an ultrasound done on the surface of the belly. It's completely non-invasive. And the step one is we measure the amount of urine in the bladder before you empty. And so we call that the pre-void, and we'll get some number. Then we have the person urinate into what we call it a hat. It's a container. It's not a real hat. It's plastic, but it's shaped like an upside down hat. So we have them urinate into this container and we measure the amount of urine. 
And then we do a second ultrasound of the bladder, a post-void residual, a post-void assessment, and we look to see how much emptied. Now, if we have more than 200 cc's, so urine, that would suggest to us that they're retaining urine and they have a problem with the bladder neck. If they have less than 200 cc's, maybe only a little bit of urine or no urine, that would suggest more of a problem up here. And so taking a clinical history and then using a bladder ultrasound are the first steps in trying to sort out what kind of bladder problem we have. Once again, my name is Aaron Boster, and thank you for learning about MS with me. If you'd like to hear more videos like this, make sure to subscribe to the channel. And until my next video, take care.